In this section of lecture, we're going to look at velocity time graphs, how to read them and how to calculate acceleration from them. Firstly, we're going to go over through some sample lines of what they might look like. We're going to represent now an object that is stationary, that is at rest. Now, this object would have, if it's at rest, a velocity of zero meters per second. That wouldn't be changing over time, so what you'd end up with is actually a straight line along at zero. That shows us that its velocity is zero and it's staying at zero it is at rest. This line would look very similar for an object that is at a constant velocity. Remember, a constant velocity means it isn't changing its velocity. So say, for example, if it was a car and the car was traveling at 15 meters per second, at a constant velocity, then we'd have a straight line on our graph at 15 meters per second. So I'm going to letter that with A, and that's going to represent our constant velocity. Next, we're going to think about acceleration. Remember, acceleration is a change in velocity over time. So if we had a line like this on our graph, that would show us that our object's velocity is increasing at a steady rate as time passes. So that might be what constant acceleration looks like. The steepness of the line indicates how greater or how small the acceleration is. A shallower line means a lower acceleration. A steeper line means a greater acceleration. And we're going to label that one as B. The next example we're going to look at is deceleration. So let's imagine we have the same object, 15 meters per second when we start the time, and it slows down to rest. This negatively sloping line represents the fact that the velocity is constantly decreasing as time passes. So then we have a deceleration, or if you remember from the previous lecture, we can also refer to this as a negative acceleration, and we'll refer to that one as C. So in summary, we can see a straight horizontal line, not at zero, represents a non-zero constant velocity. A straight sloping upwards line represents a constant acceleration, and a sloping downwards line represents a constant deceleration. Remember, the steepness of those lines tells you a little bit about the acceleration. We're going to look at how to calculate the acceleration now. Okay, so here we have a typical velocity time graph just describing a short journey. And we can see I've split this into four sections so we can talk about each one in turn. You can see section A here, we've got a straight line going upwards, which means it's a constant rate of acceleration. And they accelerate from zero meters per second to four meters per second in eight seconds. Section B, they stay at a constant velocity of four meters per second. Section C, they accelerate more sharply this time because we've got a steeper slope um, up to 11 meters per second, and then for section D, they decelerate, they slow down to rest over the next few seconds. Now we can use this graph to work out the acceleration at any one of these points. Much like distance time graphs, it's all to do with the gradient. And remember we said the gradient is the vertical difference between two points divided by the horizontal difference between the same two points. So we're going to look at calculating the acceleration during section A. So if we look at section A, we mark it off there. We have a vertical height, so a vertical difference of 4. That is meters per second. We have a horizontal distance, just reading off the bottom scale, of 8 seconds. So our acceleration is the vertical divided by the horizontal. So we have four divided by eight. If we add on the units, it makes sense. Four meters per second divided by eight meters per second, which means an acceleration of 0 0.5 meters per second squared for that first section A. So we'll try that again and calculate the acceleration during section C just to see that a steeper line does mean a greater acceleration. So if we find our start velocity we have same point starts at 4 meters per second and then peaks and goes up to 
11 meters per second. So remember the gradient is the vertical difference, so we've got 11 minus 4 meters per second, and then we need the horizontal distance, so it starts at 15 and goes to 18, so we have 18 minus 15 seconds, and then we can use that, and it's 7 divided by 3, which gives us an acceleration of 2.3 meters per second squared. So we can see the steeper line symbols a much greater acceleration than here. So before we had 0.5 meters per second, and now we've got 2.3 meters per second squared.